always, even unto the end of the world. After Jesus died and was resurrected, in your own words, what happened then? How did Christianity begin to spread? Uh, Christianity spread from Pentecost on, I guess you could say, and it was through the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe, that the word of the gospel spread. Why is it that Christians can be so specific about the life of Christ, but they're vague about what happened after he left? And it was according to God's divine plan, because as you look through history, you can see how God um, put certain circumstances or events to take place to help the gospel spread across the world. Aren't Christian leaders telling them the story? Do you know much about how Christianity spread in those early days? Would spread through word of mouth, you know, I know that uh, through through what I've learned, you know, it's it's it has spread throughout history. The the Holy Spirit descended upon them and it gave them uh, really the, the 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 power and the ability to talk about Jesus and and share him with other people in the world. Let's go back in time to see what really did happen. Uh, too far. Let's go back to the first century in the year of our Lord. Jesus Christ is said to have lived this life here in the first three decades of the century, dying somewhere around the year 33. The Gospels all came later. Mark was the first one written, and the other three are clearly derived from Mark. Mark mentions the destruction of the Jewish temple, which happened in the year 70. So the Gospels all came later than that, probably much later. There's a gap of four decades or more. Most of what we know about this period comes from a man who says he saw Jesus Christ come to him in a vision. He was the Apostle Paul, formerly known as Saul of Tarsus. After many days of hard traveling, Saul's caravan was near its destination, Damascus. The journey was nearly over. Then suddenly... The light, the light! Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who art thou, Lord? Paul says the Lord told him to start spreading the word of Jesus Christ, and he did it with a vengeance. Your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, for I see that you are in the bond of iniquity. Paul was a bit of a scold, but the salvation he offered through the God he called Christ Jesus was very popular. He traveled widely and in his wake left behind groups of new Christians who formed the early Christian church. Paul wrote lots of letters about Christianity. In fact, he wrote 80,000 words about the Christian religion. These documents represent almost all we have of the history of Christianity during this decades-long gap. And here's the interesting thing. If Jesus was a human who had recently lived, nobody told Paul. Paul never heard of Mary, Joseph, Bethlehem, Herod, John the Baptist. He never heard about any of these miracles. He never quotes anything that Jesus is supposed to have said. He never mentions Jesus having a ministry of any kind at all. He doesn't know about any entrance into Jerusalem. He never mentions Pontius Pilate or a Jewish mob or any trials at all. Paul doesn't know any of what we would call the story of Jesus, except for these last three events. And even these, Paul never places on earth. Just like the other savior gods of the time, Paul's Christ Jesus died, rose, and ascended all in a mythical realm. Paul doesn't believe that Jesus was ever a human being. He's not even aware of the idea. And he's the link between the time frame given for the life of Jesus and the appearance of the first gospel account of that life. This is why you don't hear many Christian leaders talking about the early days of Christianity. Because once you assemble the facts, the story is that Jesus lived, everyone forgot. 
and then they remember. This is just a but it gets even shakier than that. Allegorical literature was extremely common back then. Mark himself probably did not believe he was writing history. He was writing a symbolic message. He was writing a gospel, you know, the good news, and symbolizing it using, uh, you know, biblical parallels, using parallels to pagan religions and so forth. There are these other gospels, which, and there are the apocrypha, after all. There are apocryphal New Testament and apocryphal Old Testament stories that were, frankly, were too folkloristic, and they got thrown out because people thought these are... These couldn't have happened, therefore we get rid of them. But of course, some of the story, the apocryphal stories, are as interesting as the regular Bible. So you know, the, they they kept in walking on water and rising from the dead. They kept but the others, the, those were well, not there, too outlandish. Well, there have been attempts to so called so called demythologizing. There have been attempts, mostly by Jesuits and other intellectuals, who say, uh, who are upset by the, in a sense, the folklore, if you like. And they say, we've got to, let's make this more intellectual. Let's get rid of the folklore. Let's get rid of the virgin birth, which it seems unlikely. Let's get rid of all this stuff. But of course, if you take away the folklore, from, away from the Bible, you don't have a heck of a lot left except begat, 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 begat. Well, in the case of someone like Caesar Augustus, around whom many of the same myths clustered, we know there nonetheless was a Caesar Augustus because he's intricately tied into the history of the time. And many secular historians talk about it. You, you can't rewrite history without Caesar Augustus. But uh, at the very two points, Jesus appears to be locked into history. These stories are, are either still mythical, like the slaughter of the innocents derived right out of the book of Exodus, or they, they contain outrageous improbabilities, such as the, the Jewish Supreme Council meeting on Passover Eve to get rid of this guy. It's just out of the question. Or Pontius Pilate letting go a known killer of Romans, an insurrectionist Barabbas, and just letting Jesus Jesus uh, be thrown to the mob uh, after, however, trying to get him off the hook as if he has to uh, have a vote on it. It just defies any kind of historical verisimilitude. And then when you realize, well, you know, there were other ancient Jews and Jewish Christians that believed Jesus had been killed a century before under King Alexander Janias. Or in the Gospel of Peter, it says that Herod had Jesus killed. Well, what, how could this be uh, a matter of, of such diversity if it was a recent event that people remembered? It just begins to make you wonder, is this man really part of a historical time stream? Or does it, doesn't it begin to look like someone has tried to put a, a figure, originally mythical, into a historical framework and made various stabs at it? You know, I'm not surprised the Illuminati had to keep it a secret. I'm surrounded by fucking idiots. Jesus, Jesus fucking fuck.